years since you guys started the band. Yeah. Are you? What are your thoughts on this? Have you ever thought about getting solo? It's a hard thing. Maybe because we like it. <laughs> you know, I started a long time ago and been more uh, uh, a fan, pretty much the hard music. Uh, who then started to play first bass guitar, then guitar. And it was uh, the beginning. It was more like a hobby, more like doing something, more than just listening. And uh, in those days, in somewhere in '83, nobody expected that we can do something so serious and so big. And uh, of course, to survive for 30 years, that uh, you know, that's, that sounded crazy. You know, because like in those days, I was like Steve Tinnage, and uh, for me, like been like 30 years old is big to be like old just ready to die <laughs> so uh, fortunately uh, we became a professional band uh, so even if I had to work with different people in all those years like many changes but uh, the main attitude the main reason why we hit the same we just love the music we love to uh, express ourselves with this style just uh, through music, so we're speaking what we feel, just we're using this kind of language, you know, metal, extreme metal. So it might be extreme and totally not understandable for many people who are not into this kind of music, but for all fans and for us, for those who deal with this kind of music, it's just regular, you know. We're just speaking with this kind of language to the other who, you know, who follow the same way, yeah. <laughs> if I can say so. so. These 30 years, you have you have lots of uh, people change in the band, uh, but in the beginning you have you started the band with Vikas, right? No, Vika was uh, actually the co-founder of the yeah. band. So it's a guy I met uh, just that was kind of meeting. It was like one band in Austin, that's the city we were like living in, and uh, there was kind of like those those guys were already selling. They would playing totally different kind of music and actually I was uh, I was searching somebody to to do a band to start a band you know? and uh, I just saw this uh, Judas Priest uh, British Steel pin and I, I just had to talk to that guy because like I was so a huge fan of Judas Priest those days that was like probably the most extreme band in my opinion you know? that was before Slayer came with the first album so uh, of course, like that was a short. Like we just started talk. Like uh, he was looking for, uh, like band members too. He had a good place to, to to practice, to do rehearsal. You know, just so we met, we started bands. Like a month later, we found the name Vader. You know, after like research, <laughs> everything started easy. Just like everybody yeah, started. <laughs> you still keep in touch with him? Yeah, sure. sure. He uh, after we quit, that was somewhere in beginning of '86. After actually the biggest success of Vader till that time, so we took a part in the first big metal festival in Poland, the first metal festival ever in Poland called Metal Mania '86. Uh, that was in the south of Poland, and. Uh, after that, so we decided just I, just me and the drummer, and so we just wanted to play something more extreme, and that was too extreme for Vika, and he wanted to play more uh, the, the music closer to to the one we started with, and uh, which is more priest style, more heavy metal style, classic heavy metal. So uh, he started his band called Raxas, and so and they kept this early Vader style in that band, and we went into like more extreme part and uh, we started to create something which is a Vader you know today you know? and uh, uh, you know many people but you know that's it's, it's really hard today especially today to find people who can uh, think the same way you know who can do the same who can like sacrifice themselves you know because to be in band like Vader is like sacrifice self you know actually it's nobody Nobody understand it. You know, when we started, we never expected that we can uh, we can be so busy uh, in playing. You know, uh, with playing. You know, so yeah, it's so that you, don't actually, know that. you know, actually, since that's that's the answer why 30 years and why 
gone so fast, you know, it's like nobody, nobody even like noticed that. <laughs> Not me. And, uh, you know, actually I, I didn't have even time to get old. Uh, we Since 93, which was the first year and the first big breakthrough, the first tour, both our grief and in the West for us. And since that year, so we play average 100 shows every year. So imagine that, and so, so really, really not, not uh, everybody can stand it for longer. So I had to say thank you and goodbye for many people like in, in Vader history, just because they they couldn't stand it for more. They wanted to spend more time with family, with girl, you know. Yeah. And uh, and this is a hard work, you know. This is nice life, but you live like a mariner, like outside, you know, somewhere, and uh, you really need acceptance from a family and if you have any <laughs> or like your friends you know. are you guys planning to to do anything special for this 30 years you know we we did it uh, for like 25 25th anniversary actually and we don't want to like do it every five years you know? that's yeah. stupid you know and I know I know 30 years sounds more it looks more when you got this 3x uh, but I don't know, maybe we can do some like special show uh, reminding, but n not as special as that one in Warsaw for 25th anniversary. That was a really special night. It was like many friends coming. The bands like, you know, Entombed, Samuel, Marduk, like all the friends who came just to celebrate it. So the bands we spent like many times together being on tour or like just like being in touch for years. And the. Uh, I don't. I, we don't plan anything special for this year, like. So we just did it 25th. Maybe if it's gonna be like 50 years of existence, <laughs> hard to say. But if so, then we will do something probably. Yeah, okay, that <laughs> that's sense. you know, you know, we're still alive, we're still active, and like using this in Navy. Sorry, every five years is just like not good anything. Fans like new albums, so we better focus on new album and record a new album. And yeah, can we can we expect something for this year? Mm, not this year, probably. We we try to record the album at the end of the year, so we plan and probably we're gonna book the studio for October, and uh, so we can like spend more time to to with with the new songs and then record it. Uh, maybe to do something different. Maybe to find a producer who can do it like a bit different, you know. And uh, then the new album should be out like the beginning of next year. 2014. Okay, what, what do you think about this whole new uh, emergence, re-emergence of the old school death metal thing? New people, the kids are... I'm happy if I see the kids, like, uh, if, they if they like it, you know, like, after 30, after 30 years of existence, so uh, we play for probably the third generation of metal heads now, and uh, I'm really proud if I see not just like old pricks in like leather jackets and just like little, like really young generation of metalheads in the first row together with older friends, older veterans, like banging hats in the first row, like knowing songs, you know, this, this, this kind of stuff. This is, this, I think, the biggest success of Vader. So we're still alive and even if we don't have so big support in media in a band, you know, compared to other bands, like, you know, so we still have like diehard fans like around the world and they still really, really like, they're hungry for more, like they're waiting for next album, they're waiting for next shows, you know. So uh, that's great, and I'm happy that the metal in this way, like we know, you know, the hair, like jackets, something like something which was a metal for us in the past, which was something special, it was like symbol, came back in the same way. But, you know, it's, but it, what can I say? Right? Like, you know, you know we get an older, the world around us changing still, so I cannot complain. Uh, if something is changing, it doesn't mean that Vader needs to change. Like, we try to adopt, but with what we do. So we don't like change just because it might be more successful for bands. You know? yeah. We started with the music, we found the way years ago, and we evolve in our way. So we don't want to like make revolutions every five years when like everything is changing around, you know, it doesn't make sense. So we want to be like serious in what we're doing, and uh, I think that's that's one of the reasons fans respect us. You know? Well, uh, okay. Uh, we recently talked to Vogue from Decapitated, and 
Sorry. <laughs> and uh, he, well, all this uh, wake up, wake the fuck up problem. You guys were part of it, uh, also. Uh, what was, how, how did you, how do you see this thing? Uh, how, what's, what was your relationship with, with him? That's pretty good. You know, actually, uh, that was a reason why I asked him to join Vader for a season and uh, because like fog after he after the big loss after he lost his brother you know with whom he, he was in a really really hard relationship you know actually they were like creating everything and uh, fog always fog in the cabinet was kind of like heart but uh, Vitek the drummer he was a brain it was well more much more well organized uh, which sometimes uh, fog needs uh, both were talented and that was like perfect couple you know and I, I I I knew how big loss was that for fog and I totally understood uh, why it was so hard to survive at the time and uh, all in all he's a talented man and it's this kind of person just cannot sell equipment in a music store he's plays a stage and he's plays a band and he should do, do this He's born to, you know, for actually, and uh, so uh, even if I talked to Spider before, so we're talking about like doing something together. Uh, then I, I I talked to, but it's not in the city. It was just like I just asked him if something would happen, if interested. You know, I was like, all right. And then I talked to Fog, and he he just mentioned something like come back, and uh, so we made a deal, a kind of agreement, and it's like. Yeah, I took him, I pull, I'm going to pull him out from that store on the stage and he will help me with like fulfilling the lineup for the, up, for the upcoming tourings. So we did and uh, he did like, he was playing with me like one half years probably. Uh, we did the tour in, in the US, we did the tour in Europe, uh, he made some guest appearances in, in, in the last album in the studio. And uh, in in the meantime, he was like fulfilling his project, and he just he was getting back altogether. I mean, the new decapitated, the one you know now. Yeah. Uh, so I think that was a good idea. And after that, Spider. So we we continue. What we started to talk. Spider joined the band, and now we together. It's good. And. So we have two bands now, the Capitol and Vader still existing. <laughs> yeah, um, these tours basically uh, took you to some places that uh, usually are not very associated with metal, like uh, Dubai and uh, Egypt. Now, Egypt uh, is still hard to do because like, uh, there's too many problems with getting visas, you know, and finally we gave up. We tried to, to do something, we tried to explain, but it was just too much. It's like too many people were like against that, and we even had some emails from uh, from Egypt about like, you're gonna die here. Are we taking God seriously? It's all about that song, God is dead. So it, mean, it means like there's still some guys who cannot understand the meaning of a song, but whatever, you know. So, but the main reason why we gave up was the the process to getting the visas. It's so hard. So even even the U.S. it's nothing you know, to to that was hard. So we like okay, if you will be ready to take us as artists, not as a terrorist, then we can like talk and then we can like visit with pleasure, because I know there are like many fans in Egypt, you know, in those areas. Ne Nepal, that was different. Nepal, that was um, there is a the friend of mine from uh, from Poland and he's living for years like in Nepal, in Kathmandu and. Uh, Finally, he get in touch with uh, with uh, some sponsor, with a man who got a store, a music store, and the business in this area, and Bikrant, and uh, together they organized kind of festival in Kathmandu, and that was good time because we were in in, in Japan in those times, so actually we made it on the way, and it was like spectacular. It was like almost like five thousand people in the festival in the middle of a city with a big banners like you know like that was kind of big deal you know and yeah, it's good that we started that first I was afraid that maybe we like to extreme but not for those people you know I you know I understand that probably like two like one third of the crowd was like people who came just because something is happening 
I was the same in Poland in the 80s, you know. But the rest was pretty much into music. Like, so I saw shirts, I, I t shirts, I, sh I saw badges, I saw people. Like, and, uh, you know, even if it's not real easy to be a fan, metal fan in, 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 in Kathmandu because of the government and, like, you know, they don't, they don't support this kind of music yet. But they happy. They were so much happy. Like from that was that was big deal. You know? So, so it's really nice if you bring a music to the place unknown, and uh, you starting the fire. You, this is this is pretty nice. This, there were some bands like like Iron Maiden who did the same in Poland, like, in the past in the 80s. You know, they broke it been a serious band. They broke the Poland fire, and they like one of the most popular bands ever in Poland, like since that time. You know? So somebody should to do that. So I'm proud and happy that for that place that was made there. Nice thing. We like to challenge. We like to discover new areas. You know, it's still happening. But, uh, That's good. Well, changing subject a little bit. Uh, you're you have a guitar. Uh, yes, I have a guitar. With <laughs> <laughs> from Ran. Uh, what makes it unique? What are the features that you really? Uh, it's it's good guitar. What is, you know, what is unique in that? It's custom. So each guitar is made uh, in the way you want. So that, that's why it's called custom. And uh, we started together because the, the, the owner uh, of, of the, this, this company is a big friend of mine. Since years I remember his start. He was, uh, he was a working, he was working in uh, the other company. It was called uh, Vivan. And uh, actually, that part of life was his school. Let's say like he was he was like learning how to make guitar. It was no he tried to get like the knowledge of that. And after something went wrong, and that company started his own, and uh, been a really serious guy. And he, he and and the guitars, of course. So he created the instruments. It's not like furniture like many companies do it's good looking guitar but it's not good, as good for playing uh, he's still getting better trying to improve himself and the instruments first of all he's doing that for for you like you you ordering your customer so he made guitar in the way you want you want it like this you want it like that this color that color strings bridge you know hardware whatever and uh, if it wouldn't be good enough I wouldn't Endorse that over there. So yeah, what what uh, particular specs did you actually tell him to, to put up that you, know, you really enjoy? In a guitar? You know, first of all, I was dreaming to have a, the guitar in V shape. You know, that was my. I was dreaming that since since I started playing guitar, since I saw like KK Downing like and on the big post of Judas Priest on my wall, and uh, that was a metal guitar always. And uh, finally, uh, if I had a chance to create my design let's say so first of all i i choose that v-shape now so the rest is like guitar it's nothing like i didn't get like anything you know make which makes the guitar something really different this is guitar fit perfect to what i need it's got like one pick uh, just a volume control whammy bar of course because this is what i love you know and that and everything is this is a hard one guitar you know? I play guitar like uh, I like to make this kind of noises I loved in the past. I love this different kind of playing from uh, from from Van Halen, like the Judas Priest guitarist, then Slayer, and all this, you know, this this noises. I love that, you know. That's why there's so much of that innovator uh, music, you know. But uh, you know, actually, that was the meaning. You know, like I had a chance to to compose the guitar like to design it in a way like well that's obviously way. a big part that's a guitar. <laughs> a big part of, of the sound you hear in in your albums but uh, also the rest it, you, you know no no it's not also it's, it's you know sound it's not just guitar guitar is like percent of everything you know everything does matter in this in this meaning you know it's like since the peak you know since like how you how you keep it how you hold it and so like what kind of the chords you use, speakers, people who, who like it's in the middle between the guitar and uh, and the recorder. Everything does matter, you know. It's like important. It's like 
if you have like a James Hatfield guitar and get the same equipment, doesn't mean you're gonna sound like Metallica because even if you will record in the same studio, it's not like that. It's not as easy, you know. So it's everything does matter. So uh, especially how you how you hit the strings, how you make the sound, you know. Everything is in your fingers. First of all, I'm talking about guitar, you know. But the sound of a band is not just guitar. It's everything else, you know. It's everything. Yeah, but that's one thing that when you hear the first albums and the, the last album. You can see uh, a really good evolution on that. Now it's everything is very clear. You can hear the bite in it. Uh, you know, when we started with the first album, you know, the first album it's really hard to to create for a band who came from the east, who never had really good professional equipment, who had to record it in a studio somewhere like outside of Poland. So we were not so good in communication, you know, in, in language, you know, it's not. It's not like now. Now I, I, I don't have so big problem to communicate. But in those those days, uh, I was not speaking this good English, like to communicate good, you know. So uh, same equipment, you know. We we ha we use ranted stuff. So it's it means like you you don't know it. So you had to try, you know. But even if you don't agree with the sound you hear, you, you can do nothing because that's all, all you have. So the first album was uh, more like experience and actually this is like maybe 10-20% of what we wanted to do. The rest was just what we had. We had it's like no other choice, no option. Every next album, so we had better budget for doing that. We, we, we record that in Poland so it's like easy to communicate, easy to talk about the creating a song. We are working with people who are more uh, experience with like creating a metal sound already you know? so it's way easy to do something you want now than it was in the past you know? so that's why the evolution is pretty pretty natural for, for us you know? all right you were talking about uh, your you like doing those special effects and squeals and, and you know what i mean that's like, you're like the, the tremolo system you know it's like that's just what I love, you know, since the beginning, you know, since, since I think Judas Priest was the first band who made me crazy about that. I remember the song uh, Sinner from Unleashing the East and that was totally, completely made me crazy you know, about that. You know, so that then, I probably, that's why I, that's why I get so much into Slayer after they recorded the first album. I didn't like Metallica after the first album so much. Metallica came later. I found something different that, but Slayer hit me, hit, kicked my ass so much, especially after that. Die by the sword songs. That was that was priest, but more extreme, you know that. So, I you know that was that was a big deal. So all this way was pretty natural, probably for Carrie King, for Hanuman was was pretty similar. So after I discovered that they loved Priest as well in the past, and Judas Priest was so big for them as well. So probably we're walking similar path just totally different part of the world you know <laughs> well, you guys make the best uh, slayer covers you know i love slayer and uh, yeah. you know slayer is the same like black sub of the priest is still classic to me and i think uh, that's why we call it the classic we should to remind it to people it's nothing wrong playing uh, classic songs you know it's like we call it covers anyway you know some bands in the past today they use they they so often play covers and people think that this their own songs, you know. Just mention Priest, you know, like one of the most known songs, Diamonds and Rust, it's not Priest song, it's cover, right? And like, man, things like that in the past, so. Did you ever have the chance to, to jam with the Slayer guys and our songs uh, from to, Priest? To play with them, yes, right. but never to jam. No, we, we get like, we uh, play twice in Poland. Uh, where I met Carrie in, in California so once like but more personal so we like touring creator who just came to see us so we had some some shots together and talk together that's like easy that's it never get like a real chance to to do something more serious you know, so. <laughs> and what about the effects uh, do you think the effects have uh, have a place in in the better sound you know sound you know for many years uh, i was a brain of a sound i mean I was the guy who uh, who had like a last word about like the last result of a studio recording. 
so far. Uh, of course, my my point of view was evolution, what was evolving as, as same like music, it was like parallel. And but like several years ago, I just found out that it's just like not good thing. So that's why I wanted to 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 work with a producer or with uh, with just guys who can do something. And, and without hearing my opinion, because it's it kind of risk, but this is all about music. You know, record is just record. So actually, you know, the meaning of life for me is stage, it's playing live, first of all. Recordings, it's good because you're doing something new, but from, even if we have a record, the new record already made, so I'm still waiting for those songs I've been playing live. You know? So this is a matter. This is what what the most important thing to me. So to make make every next album sounding a little bit different, I really like to work with like different people, trying to create the sound in their way. Even if I will not accept everything, this is all to fans. And fans, you know, they will decide they like it or not. Not me. So, <laughs> so it's always I think it's nice, 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 nice. To, to work with producers and or with like people who can give something different, like the same soup but different flavor. You know, you know, you know uh, there was a recent study here that uh, showed that uh, Polish is the second biggest language in England. Oh, you know, after this tour, I believe it. So like, it's so many Polish people like coming to visit the shows. And not just people working here, metalheads. So it means like many of them are like living here. And you know, uh, after you open the gates to uh, to immigrants, uh, not just from uh, the rest of the world, but especially just also for Poland. So uh, many people came here for work, to see work, to and to live, which is good for Poland first of all, because in Poland we have still like many problems. We still have those problems. We need, I think, more years like to change it, to change the mentality of people. You know, for many years in the, in the past, uh, under years called communism, so to get out of Poland was very hard. To get a passport, you know, to see any part of the Western world was almost not possible. Uh, so the Poland was just too long time uh, without any practical view of the world. So what we knew about the world was the TV, and you know, TV, TV was like propaganda. So they showed what they want to show, and it was totally different than the original, original, you know, practical view. So uh, now the people, when they're traveling to work, to see, to travel, just to, to as a tourist, they broke back the piece of that world, which makes Poland mentality better. So I mean, like. There's not as many drinking people like walking around, you know, like it was in the past. There's not as many thieves, like not, 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 not so much criminals like it was in the past. Everything is changing. Not much, so many demolitions, you know, on the streets. You know, nobody cared about that before. Now, ever see, see what's going on, and they try to get. It's not just not. It's not like it belongs to everybody. Same to me, you know. So that's why I think. That, that is a good thing that people were like living on also outside Poland and they bring in that difference, the tolerance back to Poland as well. This is what we need. You know. What uh, what bands from Poland should we pay more attention to? I just met them now. You know, in the past was not too many actually. Vader was like a like a pioneer in that, but now we have like Behemoth, we get like biggest success like in, in the U.S. like and. And, and in England as well, decapitated, you know, they're huge in England. You know. We have Hate, who's just following us, everybody you know. It's not a new band, but they found like maybe some they way now and maybe the good support, good promotion, so they started to do something more serious. The Chris Agony is the next one. So we got like, at least just mentioned those, probably the five most important bands. Oh, Dead Infection. They may be not as known, but they're a legend for Grindcore, for like the core from the past so they they also traveling around the world like with what they have you know so that we we have like bands in Poland. you were talking before that uh, you guys uh, tour a lot and that you really like to be on stage well i saw your schedule 
and you you have 24 gigs with the only one day off in this tour. We hate day offs. You know, yeah. Sometimes when when the, when somebody's sick, you know, this is the only problem. Uh, it happens, especially in winter season. That's in a in a bus like this, uh, when, where we spend the whole time, and like this is like just closed territory. And if somebody is sick, like get flu or something, so the next week everybody will be. So uh, sometimes day off is just helpful. But uh, if everything is perfect, so day off is just spending money and just waiting for the next day. You know. Well. So we really love if we have a tour. This is nothing, you know. Twenty-four days, it's nothing. And uh, when we were like promoting uh, impressions in blood, so we have uh, we had nine on ninety shows with maybe a week off somewhere in between. So that was the longest probably in the career. It was almost three months in a way. Uh, that was a tour, and we survived that. That was good. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, you guys uh, in Poland, uh, usually people from bands always have like a short nickname. Is this, uh, is this something intentional or is it just in bands or does everybody have you know what like I, this? <laughs> Seriously, I, never, I was never thinking it this way. <laughs> Why? You know, it's a, the nickname is just a nickname. You know? First, when you started, you know, when we started, I tried to find a nickname for myself. And uh, in the first days, uh, when we started to play as Vader, my nickname was Behemoth, <laughs> by the way. But, you know, that was stupid because everybody was calling me Peter. Because Peter is like, it's just Peter. It's like kind of nickname in Poland, but it's a meaning of Piotr, like it's my regular name. So that just doesn't make sense if you want to be called like with evil name and everybody's calling the Peter. <laughs> so then I changed it into Peter because you know, it's just just like that. So, and uh, but hard to say. You know, how is the genesis of nickname for the all the people? You know, as I said in the past, for black metal bands, sometimes the nickname would sound like Grim. You know, it's maybe something important. You know, but you know, it's not as much for me. <laughs> <laughs>